Hey folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda V2200. If you're new to my channel, go back and check out some of the modifications we've done to this to make it a road racer, a circle track racer, and a drag racer. It's in the process of undergoing some more transformations. You'll see updates on that soon. All right, folks, so what I'm doing is I'm peeling away this uh, retaining ring of this uh, Bosch 044 pump. Um, when I have time, um, I try to figure out why things go wrong, and this is just kind of a curiosity thing to see uh, what's the reason behind this pump, and um, more important than that, what the heck is inside this can? So um, maybe we'll all learn something together. So I'm just sacrificing the uh, aluminum seal around the can to get the cover off. Just working my way around. There's a ton of other things I should probably be spending my time on, but I'm supposed to be doing distance learning, right? So I'm trying to gain an education here. And if you've never taken one of these apart, maybe we can figure out what the heck is inside these things. I'm assuming it's going to come apart without too much resistance. All right, so. The cool thing is, the top half is the um, electrical connections that go over to the brushes. So it's not a brushless motor, it's actually a brushed motor. And then there's a, a shaft with an armature in here. I'm not sure what's going to require... Uh, ooh. whole motor casing is moving around inside here. So there's an electric motor that actually goes inside of the aluminum canister. So um, this is the motor housing here. You can see that the motor housing is spinning. So um, let's work on getting that out of there. A little more Uh, relieving of the aluminum can should get that out. So the, the funny thing is that sometimes it's difficult to, to comprehend how you can do this, but um, they're actually sending fuel through the electric motor in the process of pumping it. So it just kind of, you know, you think about something as flammable as, as fuel, and then it is um, you know, the brushes are right here. The last thing the fuel sees on its way out is the brushes. And you know, if there's any shock or anything or whatever, but you know, as long as it's completely submerged, there really shouldn't be any oxygen in here, so I'm sure it's okay. Got it up as far as I can with the screwdrivers, and there's the motor. So now we have to figure out. So the magnets are pretty strong in the motor. Yep, 
it appears that they've cut into the um, armature here probably for balancing purposes there's a mark there a mark there and a mark there so maybe to balance it and then you finally expose the screws to disassemble the pump and you can just see the um, the workings of the pump rotating behind this so let's see what that's all about so this is the intake here and this is the pressure relief valve here in the bottom of the can you can see the screen and there's uh, what keeps the big chunks out anyway so um, that's in the very bottom of the can first thing you the uh, fuel sees on the way into the pump is the filter so all right so uh, there's four little allen head screws here that I'm gonna undo or socket head cap screws whatever you want to call them So I'm just trying to get an understanding here as to, um, you know, why are these things failing? And uh, if there's something I can do to prevent them. The only thing I really notice is the, um, the commutator here is a little worn down. And... The brushes probably were the cause of the failure of this because this brush is almost like completely gone. So I'm wondering if uh, it's just a matter of the, the brush is wearing out and once it loses contact or only has partial contact, obviously the strength of the motor decreases significantly. And um, as you saw, or heard me say previously this pump would run for a while and then stop so um, there's a little c-clip up here at the top of this uh, not a c-clip it's a yeah it is a c-clip or an e-clip I'll have to pop that off here um, this one was getting tired, it was slowing down, it was growling a little bit. I thought it was the, um, you know, the gears and the pump failing, which we still may find out, or um, some other mechanical failure. So that's all that engages the, the pump of those two tangs. Focus. Those two tangs attached to the bottom of the armature engage this rotor and scroll pump. I forgot I zoomed in. So um, that engages these little slots in this rotor and then these cylinders that go around get thrown out and as they get closer to this outside bore it um, compresses the fuel and sends it another and on the intake side you can see the space increases as that rotor comes around so um, it actually did something that I didn't expect first of all I thought this was a gear pump and it's not it's a rotor and scroll pump um, which is makes a lot more sense because the wear characteristics of this is so much less than and uh, the problems associated with a pump like this is um, minimized when you have this design so um, I thought this was a gear pump and obviously I thought that the gears were failing and the friction got too high or whatever but um, 
That wasn't the case. What we really might have seen, if I get the brush holder here, you can see how that, I forgot I zoomed in, you can see how that brush, just waiting for it to focus, you can see how one brush is sticking out and one is actually staying flush. So what I suspect happened is that this brush probably wore more than this one and it was no longer making contact. So there's this this still has a spring in it and when I push it up it pushes it back. This is worn down so much there's almost no tension left on the spring which would be the reason for reduced power and intermittent problems when you try to start this thing up. So, um, um, so as a diagnostic, I think the actual failure of this pump was in fact um, the brush was just plain old wore out. Unfortunately, there's no way to service these pumps because when you take them apart, you're just destroying them. Um, because this is a one-time only um, sealing mechanism for the uh, the motor and pump assembly to go inside this housing. So uh, hopefully you learned something on this today, folks. Um, I know I did. Um, there's the magnets, and they're actually quite strong. Um, it really wants to suck that uh, armature in there. And you can see it returns it to center, but it takes quite a bit of effort to push it out of there. So um, it's a pretty torquey motor. The magnets are very, very long. And um, obviously they're as long as the armature is. And um, that's how you get torque in a DC motor is the size of the magnets. And it's also a function of the length of the armature or the diameter or both. But um, anyway, that was uh, just an exercise in curiosity. And um, now I got a bench full of parts here that I really can't do anything with. Um, they're just going to go in the scrap pile. You know, these pumps, I think I paid, um, you know, maybe $30 for one, and then I needed another one in a hurry, so I might have bought one for a few dollars more, maybe $40. Bucks. Um, but to me, an education like this is um, is worth that kind of investment. I'm, I'm not happy that I've had a pump failure, um, but I can understand why now, and that maybe as a daily driver, um, you know, the life of these pumps is in fact limited. So, all right, I'm going to end there. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching.